Analytical Chemistry 1, Lesson 52. In the practice of EDTA titrations, one of the challenges is in being able to identify the endpoint. As a titration proceeds, there are changes in the solution pH, since the EDTA titrate is itself an acid. So a pH meter can provide a signal. As well, an ion-selective electrode for the ion being titrated can provide another measure of titration endpoint detection. However, the most widely used practice involves the use of metallochromic indicators, molecules which form complexes with metal ions, and whose color changes substantially between the bound and unbound state. The direct use of such indicators is to add them to the original analyte solution. Their colors should be intense so that a very small amount is needed to produce the color change. When titrated, the EDTA first sequesters the free metal ion. Then when the free ions are exhausted, the EDTA competes with the indicator molecules, complexing the remaining metal ions and liberating the indicators, who then change color as they release the metal ions, indicating the reaction endpoint. In this picture, a solution has been formed with areochrome black T in a solution buffered at pH 10. When calcium 2 plus ions are added, the solution turns red. Ferroxide is another such indicator which can be used for ions such as copper, nickel, cobalt, or thorium. Xylenol orange is used to detect titration endpoints for bismuth, thorium, and rare earth elements. These indicators are also acid-based molecules, and as such, their color change depends also upon the solution pH. Under some pH conditions, the color change will not be conducive to its use as an indicator. Therefore, selecting a given indicator for use requires considering both its metal chelating behavior and its pH characteristics. This chart here is from your textbook. Note how the various analyte ions are listed along the side, while the solution pH varies horizontally. The legend on the right is a guide to abbreviations for the various indicators that are used in the chart. The dark green regions are regions where auxiliary complexing agents are needed to prevent hydroxide formation. One issue of which one needs to be aware is that sometimes the indicator forms stronger complexes with the metal ions than does the EDTA. The metal ions are said to block the indicator. A different titration approach called a back titration, uh, we'll discuss this in the next lesson, can still be used in these cases. For example, areochrome black T is blocked by copper, nickel, cobalt, chromium, iron, and aluminum. Understanding the strengths and limitations of each indicator is important for the successful analytical determination of the ions in solution. And so in summary, here are the key points about the selection of a metal indicator. It must have a different color when bound to a metal ion compared to when it is unbound. It's pH sensitive, so the solution pH must be appropriate to provide a strong color change. The indicator must form a complex with the metal ion that is weaker than that formed with EDTA. And if the indicator ion complex is stronger than that with EDTA, a different titration approach must be used, but can still be successful.